one o'clock. So yeah. yes, welcome everyone to this opportunity. I'm not going to spend too much time, but to say that 12J has turned out to be a wonderful mechanism to channel funding into um, into projects and at Mosamani Holdings and in diversified agriculture. We are extremely excited about all the opportunities that exist. Just in a nutshell, our focus is really to support high value products. We also would like to support um, um, people, uh, product, products, projects that has got an offtake agreement and that can already provide. Um, so there are projects such as diversified, uh, um, intensified um, sheep and cattle farming, there's medicinal cannabis, there's um, things like the um, blueberries and blackberries. So all of them have got real good opportunities for investment and can generate a, a wonderful return on investment. But without going further now, so if you've got any friends or colleagues that should consider 12J but hasn't yet, just drop me a WhatsApp with their contact details and we'll make sure that we pass this um, presentation on to them as well. So without any further ado, I'm going to pass over to Chris. Chris, if you can take it forward. Certainly. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. And I do appreciate everybody's attention and, um, and, and uh, coming through. Uh, the uh, Effectively, uh, this is about prospering through, you know, through taxes. And uh, it's almost strange because what we're going to do is get our taxes back and apply it into an investment. And that sort of sounds like strange because uh, SARS really wants our money and they do, um, but they've got this incentive. It's embedded in their system. But let's go to the next slide. I want to emphasize uh, that we're a financial services provider. We've got a disclaimer on, which is a standard for a financial services provider. It gives us financial services provider license. We're regulated by the FSCA and also uh, SARS in this, um, in this. And this is really just to reflect that we are giving an information session and not an, an, inv an investment advice session. And so we do appreciate that uh, you, you, you take the information as such. So let's, let's get into the presentation. And um, the first, um, uh, next slide, please. The first thing I want to emphasize is we're going to actually look at 12J just as what it is, the nutshell as, um, as, as how it's described. Then I'm going to just briefly describe what impact investment in, or impact empowerment ventures is about uh, and impact investing, and then go on to our smart structured solution for section 12J investing and then how to access it after that. So let's look at the next slide. Impact investing is something that's gaining a lot or, or gaining a lot of traction. But section 12J itself is a fairly simple uh, mechanism. It works very simple, similarly to a retirement annuity. You know, you buy your, your retirement annuity uh, and at the end of the day, when you submit your taxes, it's a deduction of your income and you get some tax back as a result. In other words, your, the re refund that you get for you for paying into a retirement annuity is, uh, uh, it, it helps with the, um, uh, the, the paying down the costs. In other words, it makes it cheaper for that particular investment. Uh, 12J works very similarly. You do an investment of 1 million rand, uh, and, and we're going to use this example of a million rand, and that could represent a, a whole range of how much that could be. It depends on your tax bracket, but we're going to assume, let's say, 400,000 in this particular example. So you make an investment of a million rand into Section 12J Venture Capital Company, and then what happens is that you get a, a, a venture capital company share certificate which you then submit with your taxes and that and, and then you you get a refund because what happens is you if your income's a million rand the, the section 12j certificate uh, of a million rand is a million rand income minus the million rand investment that you made 
gives an income of zero for taxation purposes and that 400,000 rand that you paid in for tax, you actually get back. So your 1 million rand investment actually costs you only 600,000 rand. All right, um, it, it's accessible for individuals, companies and um, trusts. The minimum investment is a million rand. <clears throat> the maximum is two and a half million rand. And, um, and the, except for a company, the maximum is five million rand. Um, as, as we've already said, it's part of the tax legislation. It's embedded in the e-filing system. And it's already been around for 12 years, but we are waking up to it now, uh, now that it's actually just looking at the sunset clause and coming to an end. Uh, at, at the end of this month. But it is still possible to invest if one acts quickly. So let's look at the next slide. Um, and and we, we're going to just describe what impact investment does just briefly. And the first slide is, what is the target of our impact investing that we have? Next slide, please. So the, the main thing is, if I look at a hierarchy of needs, we try to, impact investing can cover a whole host of these uh, areas we believe that um, or in, in your more developed markets that focus on the top end of the pyramid things like green energy and that that type of thing but we we believe to be Africa relevant the bottom end of the pyramid you know that's food security job creation housing education but also business ownership is part of the kinds of uh, impacts that we can make right for um, uh, in, in the investments that we try to, to do. Next slide, please. So in that, we, we, we've got this acronym called ENRICH. Uh, we believe that in this investment, by creating jobs and businesses, we're creating opportunities. And that's how we enrich lives, enriching lives through opportunities and it's investment. So we say it's enhanced risk controlled returns. In other words, we're not trying to take uh, you know, ridiculous risks. So it's enhanced risk control returns that creates investment for change and hope. And that's because we're creating jobs and, um, and uh, making a difference with the investment that we make. So not only in, in Section 12J are you actually recurring your taxes for your own benefit and, and gaining an investment, you're also generating, um, a, making a difference in the society we run around. So if we go to the next slide, what we say is it's an investment. We start off with commercial merit uh, as the departure point. We then look at the people standing next to it. Do they have the talent, the skill, and ability to to actually operate the the, the project or opportunity that we are, are funding? And then we look at risk, not to run away from it, but to understand it so that we can manage and mitigate the risk. In other words, look at risk as, a, as um, something that we try and use to improve the chances of commercial success. And then finally, technology is an important um, part because for small businesses, we're seeing a shift from the, uh, what we call the, uh, um, the second industrial revolution, which is mass production, uh, to the fourth industrial revolution, which is mass customization. And, <clears throat> that's and the, the fourth industrial revolution is really giving small businesses the opportunity to compete with large businesses for the first time in several decades. So that's what impact investing uh, is about and how we you know, look at investments. If we go to the next slide, what we then go do is we go back to the section 12J and we say, right, we've described section 12J. You take a million rand out of your pocket, invest it in a, in a um, Section 12 to a venture capital company, in this case, Impact Empowerment Ventures, and you get your tax back. But there is a fundamental problem. Where do people get that million rand from, or two million rand, depending on where the income is, to make this particular investment? And, and, and this is where uh, Impact Empowerment Ventures uh, has a smart structured solution. So to go to the next slide, what we do to solve that problem that people don't have the money is that we actually write a loan for that money, right? And just say, wow, good. Uh, can that happen? And we, we, we say, yes, uh, SARS in fact specifically allows us to borrow money 
to invest in Section 12J. So what happens is that we create a loan for a million rand, um, and I'm just going to use the same example, a million rand um, investment. And so what happens is that you've created a liability of a million rand and an asset of a million rand. But that asset, which is the investment of a million rand, enables you to go to SARS and get your taxes back. Those taxes have to then pay down the loan, right? And if we get 400,000 back uh, as representing the taxes for that, that million rand in income, uh, the loan then becomes a 600,000 rand loan with 400,000 rand cash. Now, this is a critically important part of this investment process because SARS says if you take a loan, right, um, you have to pay the loan down. Okay, it has to be paid down. And so the, uh, the tax refund has to go in towards paying the loan down, right? So, and, and if, if we just left it at that, you would appreciate that um, the investor hasn't taken anything out of their pocket. And so I said, you have to be at risk. So we ask the investor to put down a 25,000 rand securing deposit, which, is, which forms part of the collateral of the loan, right? So... Uh, if we have a look at the loan, the loan is now 600,000 with a, with a tax refund in it. And cash is, 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 um, is, is 400,000. Against that, you've got the collateral of a million rand uh, share certificate in the in, in Impact Empowerment Ventures and the 25,000 rand securing deposit. And that forms the collateral for the loan. In addition to that, when we at, at, and, and at this point, while the money is in the impact empowerment ventures, we're not taking risk um, on that loan portion at all. And what happens then? We can write this as a zero interest rate loan, right? Uh, and we then shift the responsibility of servicing that loan to the qualifying company. So when the so the money passes from impact empowerment ventures to the qualifying company, um, we actually transfer the responsibility for, of the loan to the qualifying company. They service the loan um, and help pay it down uh, th you know, through the cash flow and the dividends that, that would normally be payable to the investor. And in that way, the investor doesn't really have to worry about the loan. Uh, the investment takes care of it. Uh, in, in, in subsequently things. So if we go to the next slide, I'm just going to unpack this, this diagram a little bit. So the, the first step, we've made the investment and we've got the loan. So we've got the 1 million rand assets, 25,000 securing deposit. That's the collateral for the 400,000 cash and 600,000 loan uh, that would be sitting in the investor's, uh, the, the investor's uh, account. Right, uh, with impact empowerment to uh, cash management fund. Um, we then go, if we go to the next slide, we then take that and we push this into the qualifying investment, right? And, and that residual loan in the qualifying in investment gets fully monetized. And that's where the interest, if, if, if applicable, and uh, repayments become. Um, you know, actually happen. That's where we actually service the loan. So in that sense, we've shifted risk away from the investment, the investor, and effectively, the downside then becomes the twenty-five thousand rand. In other words, if everything collapses without any chance of uh, of of any salvage, uh, we we will then see uh, the, the investor, you know, could lose their twenty-five thousand rand. But the upside is really based on a geared 1 million rand uh, investment exposure, uh, which, which makes it a phenomenal investment um, thing. It's the closest thing that the investor will get to a free investment. So if we actually have a look at what we're trying to achieve for the investor, if we go to the next slide, is that if, if the investor transferred five, 400,000 in uh, cash to us, that's the capital that they would have got from SARS. Remember, they wouldn't have, the investor doesn't have 400,000 rent, right? Um, SARS has it, all right? Um, and if you don't do the investment, that 400,000 rent stays with SARS. But yeah, we've now got it back from SARS. It's now being applied as an investment. If the investment is successful, in this case, if we grow it by 10% a year, 
that 400,000 after five years, which is the investment time period that you have to be invested for, that would be, be worth more than 600,000 after five years. And that then is, uh, you know, becomes an, a, a great investment, right? You know, from a point of view, if that it came from capital that you don't normally have. And that's the that's what Section 12 yeah, does. So if we go to the next slide, this is just putting everything together again, um, is that, uh, that the mechanism, we start off by creating a loan that creates the investment. The investment is the collateral for the loan, but the investment also gives rise to the uh, tax refund, which then starts to monetize um, the, 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 um, the, you know, this arrangement. And, um, and that then gets passed into the qualifying company where we actually shift and service, service the loan uh, in, in the actual qualifying company, uh, shifting the risk away from the actual investor. The, um, uh, and as, as we say, the interest is zero interest rate for the investor, but of course the qualifying company deals with the issues of interest in the, in the company. So if we go to the next slide, that's all very well. It sounds great. How do we access this investment? From what do we? What steps do we need to take? So let's go to the next slide. Basically, there's two things that need to happen before 30th of June. Is that we've got a commitment to invest form. That's where we actually get all the information that we need, such as the FICA files, your, your date of birth, shoe size, all of that type of thing. Um, <clears throat> And that's the, the commitment to invest and get the securing deposit in place. And we, we emphasize that if you're not sure and you, you don't have the full 25,000 available, we can, uh, we can uh, arrange terms, but we do need something in, in our bank account from your bank account to our bank account before the 30th of June. All right. Um, and and that's, that's to prove to SARS that this investment took place before the um, before the 30th of June deadline. The, 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 the um, who can invest? Companies, trusts, individuals. If you're a provisional taxpayer, you can also invest and also partnerships. And partnerships are an interesting one because you say if the minimum investment is a million rand, that means I've got to be earning a million rand. What happens if I'm only earning, say, 600,000 rand? I can put myself in a partnership with somebody else, let's say, earning, you know, let's say, 700,000 rand. Uh, yeah, you put you put together in a partnership. Your joint income is over a million rand, and we can actually then uh, then the partnership itself qualifies to to take up this investment. Uh, so we'd encourage uh, you know everybody to do that. And, and within a partnership, it's the partnership that pays the securing deposit. So it actually is cheaper for each individual participating in that um, in that investment. Um, so if I go to the next slide, I just want to say thank you very much for everybody's participation. Um, and uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, it just gives you more contact details uh, and uh, the steps that we need to take. So, and, and we really appreciate it. And I'm going to leave it there and hand back to Tristan. Perhaps if I can just ask one or two questions. Um, so in order to make it as simple as possible for people to participate. They only need to do two things, Chris. They need to complete their commitment to invest, and they have to pay a portion of the um, commit, uh, commitment fee or the 25,000 Rand commitment deposit yes. Um, yes. into the account of Impact Empowerment Ventures. Yes. And it, uh, the, it must reflect the name of the taxpayer. So if yes. it's a company, the name of the company. If it's an individual, the name of the individual. So that's yes. the simple thing. Yes. But you always refer to 12J as C capital. Um, yes. What does it open up if, if we were to build a reasonable amount of money, say, for instance, for the cannabis project? Um, yes. Can we unlock other funding as well? Well, what we find in the financial markets, if you go to even the friendliest financing institution, uh, which let's say is the Industrial Development Bank or uh, even somebody providing grant funding, in other words, a gift, 
they'll always want to know what you are putting into the, 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 the project. They don't want to be the only suppliers of capital. And so what we find, for instance, is if you raise a million rand, uh, it's actually quite possible for somebody to match fund that uh, to also a million rand. It depends on, you know, what, you know, where, where people are in the type of projects. We've got one project that the actual funders are funding 90% of the project. It's a student accommodation project. But the condition is that the actual project promoters come up with the 10%, the other 10%. Without that 10%, the 90% doesn't happen. And they've used Section 12J to raise that 10%, and the bulldozers are moving. Right, This is a project that's gone live because of 12J. It's unlocked the project because the project promoters didn't have any other sources of, um, of investment. Um, and, um, and we, you know, this mechanism has unlocked that and unlocked the actual project. So it's actually a, a, a phenomenal way of, of, of raising projects in agricultural. You know, when, I was, when the land bank was still functional, they were very clear. Match funding was something that they are, are, are very, very happy to do. Right, it's except that their big problem is most people do not have the money they're actually relying on the land bank to provide all of the capital, and that's not not interesting to them at all. Even the black, uh, in the the black industrialist fund with the um, Department of Trade and Industry, most applications fail on the question of co-funding, and Section 12J allows us to raise that. You, you know those funds that then helps unlock other funds. As, as an impact investing company, um, surely 12J is not the end of the of the road. So even though it comes to an end the end of June, um, mm -hmm. your company will continue to do impact investment. How do you see the future? Yeah. So basically, what we've what we've got is is what we call proof of concept. We've got excellent companies uh, and projects that are on our books at the moment. And um, what we then do is, you know, from that, we are able to, we're able to then um, uh, make applications and we're already in, in talks with the development finance institutions uh, to, to actually come up and supplement the funding uh, you know, that we've already achieved uh, and extending the actual uh, ability to, to grow and create jobs. And, and that's basically where we are, um, where, where, where we will be off to June is, is um, raising additional funding. Ultimately, we'd be also looking at pension funds, right, where you've got development finance institutions coming in and pension funds uh, supplementing on top of that, uh, where the development finance institution reduces the risk to the actual pension funds. Okay, so this can actually go a long way. Um, I think with that, we've promised the people that we'll finish in within half an hour. Unless there's any question, you can just unmute yourself and, and ask a question. Otherwise, we will be sending out, Tristan, this presentation link and the commitment to invest forms to everyone part that has registered. Hey. Yeah, that Chris did a pretty good presentation so early in the morning. So actually pride him for that. I think he can do this in his sleep now. That's the next challenge for him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we will be sending out to every all the relevant documents and this and this presentation. So yeah, and then we can forward that on to anyone else if anyone needs. And I mean they can contact us on anything through our website, through our social media, so that's if anyone wants to know any more about it or any, answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Tristan. Oh, um, we look forward to, to everyone participating Monday if they want any more information.